Hello there, I'm Tim Spector of the Zoe COVID study and just telling that I'm taking a short break um, with some much needed holiday, work on my TAM and I'll be seeing you in a few weeks and until then one of my esteemed colleagues will be taking over and giving you uh, this week's update. See you soon. Hello, I'm Dr Claire Steves and I'm from King's College London and I've been working with the COVID symptom study together with Tim since its beginning. Um, and we, so we've sent him on a well-deserved break after 18 months of working really hard on the COVID symptom study app. Um, so I'm standing in his place and I'm gonna to say to you today some uh, updates on the latest figures we've got. I'm gonna show you some really interesting data that we've got around the pandemic. Um, and also I'll be telling you a little bit more about early symptoms in COVID-19. So the first thing about uh, the figures going down is that obviously more people are vaccinated. So the virus is running out of places to go. And so that's really good news. And we really need to do the final push to get everybody vaccinated with their second dose and then be thinking about booster vaccinations to keep it down. Um, the second thing is, of course, that schools have broken up. And this is really important because schools are not just a place where children mingle. They're also a place where parents congregate to get the children from school. And it's also been driving some of the testing because people in secondary schools have been testing with lateral flow tests. And so because schools are out now, fewer people will be testing, but also maybe fewer people will be mingling in the same ways as they were. The third thing is that I think that surge testing that's being done within the country over the last weeks and months has probably slowed down as well. And I think that obviously, depending on the number of people that you test, you may detect different amounts of virus within the community. And this is a key thing with the Zoe COVID symptom study data, because, of course, our incidence values are calculated on the basis of people that are getting new symptoms and then are volunteered uh, are offered to come in for a test. And that means that we haven't changed who we're asking to come forward for a test. It can be people with really very mild symptoms, much bigger than the three core symptoms used by the government. And so that means that potentially we are able to detect uh, cases where they wouldn't be tested by the government. But also we're not dependent on surge testing. And so our figures perhaps are um, not reflecting any changes that have been done in the testing methods um, inputted throughout the country. One key bit of uh, information is that young people um, are uh, who were um, maybe more infected within this wave, um, those, uh, in, those figures in younger people seem to be also on the decline. So that's really good news, especially as that population is have, has less vaccination than the rest of the population. In Scotland as well, it's really good news that the figures are really coming down and they started coming down a bit earlier in Scotland than they did in, in England. And I think that might be partly because schools broke up earlier. It'll be really interesting to see what happens in September when schools go back um, in. Everybody's wondering whether or not school children should be vaccinated. And I think um, for sure, we know that um, it's safe and effective in people over 12 years of age um, and is now licensed. Um, I think the question as to the priorities of vaccination are really going to depend on the availability of the vaccine. It's really important that people in their 20s um, and in their late teens are vaccinated um, because they have slightly increased risk um, of um, uh, both um, acute COVID and also um, long COVID. Um, so those people need to go first and then hopefully we'll be able to extend to um, school children. One thing to say about um, different figures is that um, all of these in a sense are estimates. Um, we produce figures as quick as we can to share them with the nation um, based on testing that's being done over the last few days. ONS, they've brought out their figures as well, which are showing very similar figures to ourselves now coming down. Um, I think that's really interesting to see how these do correlate. And of course, we're not that different from the pattern that's seen within the government data. Um, and obviously using slightly different uh, methods of getting people into tests means that the, the figures might be slightly different, but everybody's now showing the same thing, which is probably we're over the peak of this part of the pandemic. So let's have a look at what's happening in the rest of the world. Um, so here's a graph. Um, 
we are no longer reporting the highest numbers in the world. Um, Spain is higher, um, although these seem to be going down again, so that's good. France and the USA are on a steep upward trajectory and look to overtake us soon. And Italy, cases are on the rise again. And all of this may be driven by this very transmissible Delta variant. So last week, we gave you a first look at the results on our, um, app, about, our app survey about the pandemic. Um, which we conducted um, uh, asking you about whether you use the various NHS um, tracing apps used in England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. And um, it's been very interesting because, uh, as you know, in the last couple of days, um, the English strategy has been changed to reduce um, the uh, time that people are um, thought to be in contact with each other from five days to two. And that means that fewer people will be pinged going forwards. And they've done that because of the large number of people that have been pinged and asked to isolate recently. recently. So our data was done before those changes were made in the app, but I think they provide some really interesting insights. So the data goes and looks at 750,000 of you who downloaded both the Zoe app as well as downloading um, the NHS app or regional chest and trace apps. 425,000 people that are um, using the Zoe app um, are also on one of those apps and they have the, it, it installed and the Bluetooth is on. We did see that about 75,000 people um, have had the app uh, installed, um, the tra track and trace app installed, but the Bluetooth is turned off. Um, that's what they've said to us. And about 150,000 people have turned their app off or deleted it completely. Um, so um, overall, what's really interesting, though, is that we found that people who were pinged were more likely to test positive than people who were not pinged. So how do symptoms and pinging interact? Well, we've done some really interesting work about this, um, which I think I'd like to share with you. So basically, if you've not been pinged and you've not got symptoms, unsurprisingly, you've got a low risk of testing positive for COVID. However, if you've been pinged and you've not got any symptoms, we found actually the number of people that were reporting on the app that they were being tested, the percentage of those people was really very low um, that tested positive, about 2.7%. However, if you were pinged and you did get symptoms, then your risk of um, being positive, if you were testing on the app, um, was much greater, about 31%. That's a tenfold increase in risk if you've got symptoms as well. Those who were not pinged but actually had symptoms also were more likely to have a positive test. And so this shows the importance of really reacting to symptoms. We've got a one, a more than 20 symptoms that we've identified that can be a, a, a associated with new COVID. Um, that means that um, getting a test, a lateral flow test, if you have new symptoms, is really the right thing to do. And as things change over the next month, when I think probably the stipulation that we have to isolate if we're pinged um, maybe falls away, it's going to be really important for individuals to really pay attention to if they have any symptoms and make sure they isolate if they do. At the moment, we'd highly recommend that everybody who gets pinged isolates as is the protocol and as is su suggested by the government because of that four times in at least four times increased risk of having COVID that we've identified with our data. So I want to tell you about a paper that we've had published um, in Lancet Digital Health last week um, which looked at Zoe app users reports over seven months in 2020. Um, so it was looking mainly at the wild type virus but also at the alpha variant and we were able to model using machine learning um, the symptoms of the very earliest part of um, anyone's disease within the first three days, because we really wanted to identify what are the symptoms that are presenting the very first. And here's what we found. We found that they were different in different groups. And that's really interesting, that 
There are differences between older adults and younger adults, between women and men, between healthcare workers and non-healthcare workers. But broadly, the symptoms were very broad. In fact, we put 18 different symptoms into our models. And you can see a little bit more of the, uh, of the, of the detail of this here. Fever, while known common symptom of the disease and obviously very important for severe illness actually was not an early feature of the disease so don't wait till you get a fever to go and get a test. Men were more likely to report shortness of breath, fatigue, chills and fevers whereas women slightly more likely to support loss of sense of smell although that was strong in, in men as well and chest pain and persistent cough. But I think the, the, the one of the really key things to point out was that in older people we actually found that loss of sense of smell was less predictive um, than it was in younger people. And so it's really important not to rely on that as a symptom marker to go and get a test. Um, really any symptom of acute um, viral illness should be prompting people to get their lateral flow tests. So do keep an eye on these rates while things are coming down. Um, that's really good news. Um, but of course, still rates are still high and COVID hasn't gone away. So please act responsibly and keep safe. Spread the news about the um, symptoms and getting tested if you have cold-like symptoms, making sure you use the freely available lateral flow tests if you get um, uh, any symptoms. I want to say thank you to everybody for their continued daily logging. It's been amazing. Your contributions are really invaluable and have been crucial in our research and being able to share that with you as quickly as possible. Um, do keep an eye out on our websites for any app updates um, and remember to like and subscribe and hit the notification button um, if you'd like to be informed as soon as any videos that we do go live. Thank you and keep logging.